Yo guys, I've got a spark which I'm going to use to ignite the fire for another video here in the channel. Now there certainly is no denying that Skanders are a little bit on the expensive side. Each year a new game would come out and the daunting task of collecting them all always came with a £500 price tag at the bare minimum. Fortunately, there were ways of saving a few pounds here and there by investing in triple packs that gave you free Skarners at a cheaper price than buying all three of them individually. What's funny is just how random some of the characters they chose to combine were, as well as how late into the game's lineup some of these triple packs released. Because of this, some of them have became quite obscure. Some Skarners fans might not even know about every single triple pack which was ever released for each and every Skarners game, so luckily that's what I'm here today to talk about. Starting with Spyro's Adventure, there was a total of 8 triple packs, meaning 24 of the original 32 characters were available in a triple pack format, and none of them of course repeated. But what about for other 8 characters I hear you asking? Well first of all, Spyro, Gilgun and Trick Happy weren't available in any of these triple packs as they were starter pack characters. Then Slam Bam, Terrafin, Ghost Roaster and Sunburn weren't available in any triple packs either since they were all exclusive to their respective adventure packs. Finally, Wham Shell was for the last Skana to be released of the entirety of the original 32 character lineup, hence why he never got included in a triple pack and was exclusive to single pack formats, which is why you see his gameplay before you. Now let's bear in mind that the 3DS starter pack for Skana Spice Adventure possessed Igniter, Stealth Wolf and Dark Spire, characters of the fire, life and magic elements respectively. This led to a few oddities within the triple pack choices. Only one water scarder was ever released in a triple pack for this game, that being Zap. And here's triple pack, Dinorang, Hex and Zap was the only one you could get that would give you three elements unique to the three elements you got within the 3DS starter pack. Since those elements, Earth, Undead and Water respectively, didn't match any of those of all three of the elements of the starter pack characters found within the Nintendo 3DS version of the game. Of course, for the console version, you can't quite get three unique elements from this triple pack, as Zap and Gilgrunt were both water scanders and those two elements matched, and the only two elements remaining were the only two elements different from the three starter pack elements, as Earth and Undead elements were not included in the starter pack for the main console version of the game. This basically means every other triple pack from this game had at least one fire, one life, or one magic Skarner. But sometimes when it came to Skarners and triple packs possessing the same elements as the Skarners in the starter packs, they went to the extreme and had two entire characters from the triple pack possess the same element as two of the characters from starter packs. I understand that this is hard to grasp without a visual, so the perfect example here would be Igniter, Camo and Warnado, a fine triple pack might I also add because two of the three characters are phenomenal, but the problem with it really is that Igniter being a fire scanner and Camo being a life scanner means that those two characters both share the same elements as two of the characters from the 3DS starter pack, but then again, 3DS owners probably wouldn't pick up that pack anyways, considering they'd already own Igniter, since he was of course one of those 3DS starter pack characters. However, if that triple pack did give you three unique elements in comparison to the three elements of the star uh, console starter pack even, as none of the elements for Igniter, Camo and Warnado are magic, water or tech. Other triple packs of this manner include the iconic Eruptor, Chop Chop and Bash, as those elements are Fire, Undead and Earth, yet again, none of the mainline starter pack elements, as well as Cinder, Zook and Lightning Rod. And again, none of those triple packs had characters of the magic, water or tech elements. This leaves us with only four triple packs to talk about, the best of which has to be the triple pack containing Drobot, Flame, Slinger and Snoop Smash, as all three of these characters are incredible. I remember seeing this pack in Tesco one day and begging my mum for it, 
She agreed to buy it for me, but I had to earn it by doing some chores around the house once we got back. There was also a triple pack for Boomer, Prison Break, and Voodoo, where the Forgotten Cast truly overwhelmed Prison Break, it seems. But the problem with this pack is that you've got a tech and a magic scanner, two elements in which you already got from the starter pack via Trigger Happy and Spyro, so this wasn't the most effective triple pack if you were looking to save money and get all eight elements from this game efficiently, mind you. There was also a triple pack containing Wrecking Ball, Stealth Wealth, and Sonic Boom. This seems to be the most common way to find Crystal Stealth Wealth as a chase variant, mind you. Finally, there is the weakest triple pack from this game, in my personal opinion, Whirlwind, Double Trouble, and Drill Sergeant. You would think this would mark the end for Spyro's Adventure triple packs, but you'd be wrong. There was also four legendaries in the Sky and the Spyro's Adventure lineup. This meant Legendary Spyro, Legendary Chop Chop, and Legendary Bash acted as the final triple pack from the Sky and the Spyro's Adventure lineup. It's effectively the same triple pack as Eruptor, Bash, and Chop Chop. Just switch out Eruptor for Spyro and then make them all legendary, and that's your final pack right there. Exclusive to Toys R Us, of course, like all legendaries from every game. And unfortunately, this, uh, this did leave Trick. A legendary Trick Happy even as a single pack exclusive character along the same lines as Whamshell himself of course. Next up is Giants, for roster this time around was 48 characters thick he could go as far to say, so naturally we got more triple packs this time around, but only a couple more as we got 10 this year rather than 8. Which begs the question, if that means 30 characters in total were included in unique triple packs to one another, whatever happened to the other 18 within the cast even? Well, firstly, Giants never got a single triple pack, and the only Light Corps to get their own triple pack was Light Corps Robot, Light Corps Prison Break, and Light Corps Eruptor, a rather obscure triple pack now, but believe me, it's an official one all the same. So that adds another 5, bringing the cast already down to 35. Two more characters were exclusive to the starter pack, that being Jetvac and Cinder, although Series 2 Cinder later got re-released in a single pack, targeting those who bought the booster pack for Giants and as such didn't already own her, or of those who got the Glow in the Dark version through the starter pack and wanted the regular version as well, I suppose. Two more of those characters included Series 2 Chop Chop and Series 2 Zap, whom were included within their battle packs and exclusive to said battle packs. Which leaves us with only one, that being Series 2 Drobot, whom got the same treatment as Whamshell and only ever got released in a single pack, hence why he is your current gameplay on the screen. I'm starting to notice that the single pack only characters tend to become the rarest ones. I never bought a single of these triple packs, uh, therefore I have no personal connection to them. Seven of the nine remaining that we're yet to talk about contained at least one of a brand new course Giants had to offer, and it all starts with Chill, Series 2 Igniter, and Series 2 Zook. Then there was also Series 2 Double Trouble, Series 2 Gilgren, and Flashwing. Then there was also Series 2 Stump Smash, Series 2 Sonic Boom, and Sprocket. Then there was also a triple pack containing Series 2 Trick Happy, Series 2 Whirlwind, and Pop Fizz. These next three are rather strange combinations, as one of them possessed Series 2 Wrecking Ball, Series 2 Flame Slinger, and Fright Rider, for example. Especially since Fright Rider was a Wave 1 release, and Series 2 Flame Slinger was a Wave 2 release, and yet this triple pack wasn't released until the fourth wave of the Giants figurines, as this was the wave that Series 2 Wrecking Ball belonged to. So, three waves later, and we see the re release of Flame, uh, Fright Rider, even, exclusive to a triple pack of all things. What makes this strange is that most people who wanted the character would have got him already, making the triple pack useless in their eyes. The next two contain the cores from their respective battle packs. Again, it's weird to see battle pack characters re-releasing triple packs of all things. Shroom Boom got a triple pack in the form of Series 2 Slam Bam, Series 2 Hex, and himself. Meanwhile, Hot Dog got a triple pack alongside Series 2 Spyro and Series 2 Bash. Great for America as this re-release finally made Series 2 Bash more easily available after months of him being quite rare. The final two triple packs contain Series 2 characters only, quite useless for Spyro's adventure collectors who already had those characters. We're talking about Series 2 Lightning Rod, Series 2 Drill Sergeant, and Series 2 Prison Break for one of these triple packs, and then the other contains Series 2 Stealth Wolf, Series 2 Eruptor, and Series 2 Terrafin. 
Once again, all of these packs were released at least two waves after two of the characters included in said packs had already been released in their single pack forms. I have once again left out for Legendary Triple Pack until now, and this is for the last Legendary Triple Pack we ever received for the Skardas franchise. Games from here on out released Legendaries exclusively in single packs, or in Trap Team's case, as for Legendary Nightmare Express. But getting back on track, this Triple Pack of course contained none other than Legendary Igniter, Legendary Slam Bam, and Legendary Jetpack. Even Legendary Bouncer, Legendary Lightcore Chill, whom was the first Skarner in Easter Pack of all things, as well as Legendary Stealth Elf, all as single pack exclusive releases. Swap Force continued the trend of making the cast much larger. This time, there were 7 characters of each element, making for 56 characters in total. However, this time we went back to only 8 triple packs. With 24 characters, that leaves 32 of them missing. Of course, 24 of them didn't feature in any triple packs whatsoever, as Light Cores and Swappers never got any triple packs to call their own. The closest was double packs for Swappers, in which case there were four. Nitro Magna Charge with either Rattleshake or Free Ranger, either one of the Swappers from the 3DS starter pack by pure coincidence. And then there was also one with Grilla Driller and Firecracken paired up, as well as one with Boom Jet and Night Shift paired up. But that still leaves eight characters remaining. Now, Grim Creeper, Bumble Blast, Wind Up, and Pop Thorn remain exclusive to their respective battle and adventure packs. Series 3 Stealth Elf remain exclusive to the starter pack, now leaving us with only three characters that were never included in a starter pack, and those characters were Smolder Dash. No doubt because her regular core wasn't released until Wave 4 and her light core was released all the way back in Wave 1, nullifying the demand for her to be in a triple pack as most customers already had at least one version of her. And then there was also Countdown, which is odd since you'd assume they'd prioritise the brand new cores for all the triple packs because this means both the brand new tech cores for this game never even got released in a triple pack. But finally there was Punk Shock, who remained exclusive to her Easter single pack form. I assume they didn't want a triple pack consisting exclusively of brand new cores, and if this triple pack with all three of those characters wouldn't have released until Wave 4 anyways, and in that time both Countdown and Light Core Smolder Dash were both Wave 1 releases, and since we got Light Core Countdown in the middle of those releases, I can't imagine the demand for him being incredibly high to justify uh, both of these characters being re-released in the same triple pack several waves later. So if they left these three as single pack exclusive characters, the only time characters like these didn't become immediately rare. Plus two of the three of them were later re-released in Champions packs for Imaginators. Meaning they clearly had enough leftover figurines to release them this way, they just didn't. But remaining on topic with the Swap Force triple packs, this year I got two of these triple packs. One containing Series 3 Trick Happy, Star Strike and Gilgren, as I saw it discounted on a Tesco store shelf once. Then I also grabbed the triple pack containing Series 3 Chop Chop, Scorp and Series 2 Sprocket. At the time I had Scorp already but I needed for two reposes and this pack was at home bargain so it only cost me £4. Other triple packs included Series 3 Spyro, Series 2 Chill and Zulu. Then there was one containing Series 3 Eruptor, Series 2 Pop Fizz and Slobbertooth. And there was also a triple pack containing Series 3 Prison Break, Series 3 Whirlwind and Riptide. Then there was also a triple pack containing Series 2 Hot Dog, Series 2 Jetpack, and Roller Brawl. Re-releasing Roller Brawl well after her initial Wave 1 releases. Once again, this was a triple pack that was left all the way for Wave 4 as it released alongside Series 2 Hot Dog's initial release, mind you. The final two triple packs contained characters from the battle packs, however, unlike Giants, rather than these triple packs containing the brand new cores from those packs, instead these triple packs used for repost characters from either pack. I guess that's mostly because Grim Creeper and Bumble Blast also got light cores and, didn't, uh, and they didn't even want to keep trying to sell you the same characters again and again and again, so they thought re-releasing for re uh, reposes even would be a greater shot at helping these packs to sell better. Again, these came waves after their initial releases of 
the battle packs that they came from initially. Since these triple packs were Wave 4 releases, mind you, firstly, there was Series 3 Terrafin, Series 3 Cinder, and Doonbug. Secondly, there is Frino, Scratch, and Series 2 Camo, which is really odd because this is the only triple pack to contain two of the brand new cores of this game rather than one. Scratch was also scarcely released, making me shocked they chose her over Countdown for this pack, in all honesty. But again, constantly ramming Countdown down our throats wouldn't have been the greatest distribution call. So even with a triple pack release, Scratch still went on to become quite rare. How interesting. But speaking of what's interesting, they released a very rare and very limited triple pack. This was incredibly odd as all three of these characters were already in their own respective triple packs and all three characters were of the same element. They, re uh, they released even what was known as the Magic Triple Pack, containing Series 3 Spyro, Series 2 Popfizz, and Star Strike. One odd release to say the least, but it has become quite rare, so it does have that going for it as a bare minimum. Trap Team gave us our biggest roster yet, with 56 traps and 57 characters to collect. Despite all of this, only 4 character triple packs were for released, but we did however get 6 triple packs containing traps. None of which contain any life, water, light or dark traps. I think they wanted to keep life and dark separate so they would feel more special, and there was no need to include life and water traps in triple packs. Most people would only want one trap for each element, and those trap elements were found within the starter pack. It's like uh, taking starter pack characters even and putting them in their own respective triple packs. It's worthless and they just simply wouldn't sell. Anyways, the triple packs at hand include the Air Snake, Undead Axe, and Magic Hourglass. Then there was also the Undead Skull, Fire Torch, and Air Jughead. Then there was one containing the Magic Rocket, Fire Scepter, and Tech Hand. Then the Tech Scepter, Magic Lock Holder, and Earth Orb was the triple pack of traps I picked up on the day one launch of the game, but the final two triple packs with traps inside of them are by far the most interesting ones as both of these packs included one chaos trap. There was the air sword chaos trap and earth handstand triple pack, as well as the fire totem chaos trap and tech flying helmet triple pack. What's odd is that I never saw the first triple pack I talked about in stores, so I assume that this was a split in terms of distribution. So everywhere outside of Europe got the Air Sword, Chaos Trap, and Earth Stand triple pack, whereas Europeans would have found the Fire Totem, Chaos Trap, and Tech Flying Helmet. Of course, I could just be making an incorrect assumption here, but if I was to make an assumption, that would be the one that I would make. All in all, this means 17 unique traps were released in triple packs. The ultimate chaos trap was exclusive to the Dark Starter Pack, then there was the Life Hammer and Water Tiki that was exclusive to either Starter Pack, and finally there was the Life Eagle as well as the Dark Spider which were exclusive to their respective elemental expansion packs, leaving 34 traps exclusive to single packs only, with the exception of certain water sculpts that could also be found alongside Eon's Elites in gift packs. I feel like it would have been cool to include a free trap with each trap master, with them both being of the same element, and this would make a great selling point for the trap masters, I reckon, but they sold based on how OP they were in game, as well as how cool they looked alone, so they didn't really need any more selling points on top of that, I suppose. But it still would have been cool to get a free trap with each trap master regardless. With that being said, it's time to move on to the character based triple packs. Back during the Trap Team era, I bought all of these to save myself some money. It started with Torch, Blades, and Series 4 Gilgrunt, the first ever triple pack to include an adventure pack character within it. I bought this, then I also got later down the line for Legendary Nightmare Express, and then for regular Hand of Fate, leading to me eventually owning all of the separate components anyways. Of course, for Legendary Nightmare Express and Legendary P uh, Piggy Bank even, look the exact same and function the exact same way as for regular versions, so the only thing I needed both versions for was for Hand of Fate, as Hand of Fate looks different in its legendary form. Then there was Series 2 Chopper, 
not Series 2 Chopper, Series 2 Shroom Boom. There's no such thing as a Series 2 Chopper unless you're talking about a leak before Superchargers was officially announced. But putting all of that obscure knowledge aside for the next triple pack to talk about right here is Series 2 Shroom Boom, Chopper and Funny Bone, which I bought for £15 back when for recommended retail price was still 25 So I got myself a bargain with that there triple pack. With my Christmas money, I managed to buy a triple pack containing Series 2, Frino, Cobra Cadabra and Batspin. And then the final triple pack was Series 3, Jetpack, High Five and Trailblazer. With only 12 characters getting a triple pack, whatever happened to the other 45 characters? Well, minis were all double packs, ex uh, double pack exclusives even, and trap masters were never released in triple packs either. That immediately eliminates 32 characters. Four more were the Light and Dark characters, again they no doubt kept them separate from all these triple packs so they would feel more special and exclusive. Food Fight was exclusive to the starter pack and Deja Vu was exclusive to her respective adventure pack. That leaves us with seven more characters, Series 3 Pop Fizz, Echo, Flipwreck, Fling Kong, Treadhead, this bump and rocky roll. It also means that this year round there was never any earth, light or dark characters available in any of these triple packs. you think they'd have done something like series 3, pop fears, tread head and fist bump. At least, I mean there's two triple packs worth here, three if you factor in for life and dark cores, but yet they did nothing and that's rather unfortunate. Next up is Superchargers, this game had all sorts of packs, first of all they had Supercharger combo packs containing a Supercharger as well as their respective vehicle, however the occasional triple pack did slip through the cracks which was basically a Supercharger combo pack with an additional vehicle, but there were only two of these, Bone Bash Roller Brawl alongside the Tomb Buggy and Splatter Splasher, as well as Shark Shooter Terrafin alongside the Shark Tank and Jetstream, funny how both the Supercharged in this case were two of the revamped versions, but between these two triple packs you still got two land vehicles, two superchargers, a sea vehicle and a sky vehicle, so between these two packs you would have bought enough to beat the entire game with. Still though, this is 6 out of the game's 36 supercharger and vehicle combinations, well 40 when you factor in for Nintendo characters of course, so yes that means that an entire 34 characters missed out on their triple pack opportunities. Finally, four Imaginators of course they didn't cheap out and give you any sense of triple packs, that's saving you too much money, you MUST buy them all separately, you MUST. Activision needs that sweet sweet dough for the final nail in the coffin in the Skarners franchise, you know, they really need to zap this cash cow dry now, don't they? But putting all of, you know, that madness aside, there were some double packs that contained creation crystals as well as a sensei, but speaking of creation crystals, they and of themselves were given triple packs at least, there were four, every element being found at least once, with undead and magic even showing up twice within these triple packs. These packs included fire, light and earth, then there was one with magic, tech and undead, then there was one with water, life and air. Finally, there was a triple pack containing dark, undead and magic creation crystals. The most efficient way to get all of the elements, excluding fire, which was in the start pack, was to get the first three triple packs I mentioned and then just buy a single dark creation crystal pack. Or get the dark start pack and the first three triple packs that I mentioned about, then you're only getting doubles of the life and fire creation crystals. Anyways, I alluded to champions packs earlier. There were three of these in total and what they did is they took three swap force characters and re-released them in brand new packaging which they renamed as champions packs. Either way, it was glorious to see the Imaginators logo and all of this repackaging, even if these were familiar faces that were just re-releases of old characters that they had excess stock of in their warehouses. But what's so frustrating about these releases is that you'd buy these quote-unquote champion packs and then realise that in Imaginators, the game marketed on the packaging of these triple packs for all things that all three of these characters you just bought were extremely weak in the game. 
All of the older Skarders, for that matter, were heavily nerfed in Imaginators. It's extremely dumb. They just wanted to get rid of the excess stock in those warehouses. And so these re-releases came in the most laziest fashion possible. But getting back on track to talk about what these packs themselves contained, one of them was none other than Countdown, Series 3 Stealth Off and Riptide. Two of these characters in which never got their own triple pack appearances during the Swap Force era. Then one pack included Smolder Dash, Dunebug and Series 3 Cinder. Basically the same as one of the triple packs released in Swap Force, the only difference being that Smolder Dash replaces Series 3 Terrafin here. Finally there is Series 3 Prison Break, Series 3 Whirlwind and Zulu. Again the same as the triple pack release in Swap Force just with Zulu replacing Riptide. Riptide of which hilariously enough was in another champion Champions pack in of itself. There were also two, Mar uh, two Walmart and exclusive champion packs even, uh, pardon my stutter right there, but regardless, I don't think the exclusivity helped them sell, in fact it was more stupid than anything. But these packs were all extremely overpriced, it was £30 for three figures, which is more than they were worth when they were first released. And for that price, you could also get two entire senseis, which were more overpowered and more fun than those cores anyway. But getting back on track, the first of these Walmart exclusive champion packs contained Series 3 Stealth Wolf, Series 3 Chop Chop, and Series 3 Trigger Happy. The other included Series 3 Spyro, Series 2 Eruptor, and Series 2 Pop Fizz, similar to that Magic exclusive triple pack from Swap Force, just with Series 3 Eruptor replacing Star Strike. These packs did become worth it, however, when they were on sale. I picked up the Series 3 Whirlwind, Series 3 Prison Break, and Zulu pack when it was on a 90% discount, so I got it for £3 rather than £30, and in that case, it was positively worth it, as I needed Series 3 Prison Break and Series 3 Whirlwind at the time, which leads to a fun fact. Zulu is the character that I've always owned the most versions for. Throughout my lifetime, I have owned over five... Zulus. I don't know, I just seem to find them in abundance. Regardless, before I wrap things up, I want to mention that a list with all of these triple packs can be found in the description, as it could have been hard for you to keep up with all these triple packs as I just simply spoke about them before you, especially in a video as long as this one. Now with that all being said and done, this video is coming to an end, but before that happens, I first want to thank all my Blazing Knights and Scorpion Dragons whose support allow me to continue pumping out quality videos like this one. Without them, this all wouldn't be possible, therefore I genuinely appreciate every last one of you from the bottom of my heart. If you enjoyed this video, I have others you can watch by clicking on screen now, and you can even subscribe by pressing the button on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. Until the moment arises, peace.